The Central Bank has announced a new set of capital thresholds for Nigerian banks requiring international, national and regional banks to maintain minimum share capital of 500 billion naira to 100 billion naira and 50 billion naira respectively. This sweeping financial reform was announced on Thursday, March 28, 2024. And joining me to unpack this is Nabila Mohammed, investment analyst, Chapel Hill, Denham. Thank you so much for joining me today, Nabila. Thank you for having me. Good morning. All right. Well, the CBN governor hinted about the recapitalization of banks sometime last year, although this is due to prevailing macroeconomic challenges and headwinds, you know, whether domestic or global. However, I'd love you to begin by telling us what necessitated this recapitalization at this time and what you think about the timing. So, um, like you said, it was hinted last year. So the banks already had in mind that truly something was going to happen in regards to capitalization this year. So they were already pre-informed, I would say, to start with. Now, talking about the time, we understand that the banks are, you know, very key, very vital when it comes to contributing or supporting businesses to promote economic growth. So when we have them well capitalized, they would be able to carry out their function of providing, um, taking money from the excess um, um, part of the um, society and giving it to those that would need it to encourage or improve output of businesses. So for that to happen, really, banks have to be capitalized. And when we look at the timing that this thing is coming at, um, the capitalization is largely going to be equity capital driven and not debt capital. So what that simply means is that given the current bullish run that we have in the equities market, the year to date return of around 39%, is largely in support of whatever equity capital rates that these banks will have to do eventually. So I think the timing is, is not bad at all, given that it's coming when there is we are beginning to see interest in um, and FPIs coming in and stuff. So that would definitely encourage or bring, um, bring, bring it open to those sets of investors that want to take advantage in the equities market and also take um, um, advantage of the fact that it is we are in a bullish run currently. So I think the timing is not bad. And I think that given that they've already been pre-informed about it, so they were already prepared for whatever and whatever it was that the CPN was going to come out with. So. All right, talking about you know the timing and then especially the bullish run in the equities markets that you made reference to, let's look at this particular one. What do you make of the exclusion of retained interest from the calculation of banks share capital you know uh, seeing that in accounting terms when you talk about retained capital or uh, retained um, earnings it actually talks about uh, what you have but of course you're not sharing it out or you're not giving it out to shareholders as dividends you're retaining it i mean it, it's considered a component of a company's equity uh, because they represent profits that have not been distributed as dividends but are instead reinvested in the bank so what do you make of this particular provision so really what I make of it is that it's just clear that the CBN wants to have the banks inject fresh capital into their business and not um, um, capital from their, from their um, business that you know, they want to retain. So if we look at this, the, the two um, sell, um, aspects of the capital that they said was going to be what makes up the new minimum capital requirement, that's the share capital and the share premium. Those two types of capital came in with their fresh funds. It not, has nothing to do with their retained earnings. So for the bank, that's the central bank in this case, to be specific and say that we ha they have to show up capital using those, looking at those two avenues, it means that they want to see fresh capital in, into the system and not just recycling of what they have from their retained earnings or, or whatever they have retained over time. So you want to see fresh monies come into the okay. system. I think that is really what they want to see, what the CDM wants. You know, it's nice to say some of those things, but then some of the bankers themselves who spoke under the condition of anonymity expressed your opinion that while the central bank prefers them to retain most of their earnings to reinforce their capital base, it should not concurrently, I mean, at the same time, prevent them from counting these undistributed earnings as part of their capital. Uh, what, do you, what do you make of this, really? If we have a situation where the people this particular regulation is made for are sort of murmuring or complaining about it, I mean, aren't you, just, aren't you also going to look at their own um, argument? So, yes, the argument is valid. And when we, uh, when we look at it holistically, they would, that retention, retained earnings would definitely form part of their shareholders' fund. 
but for the capital of the bank, it will not be part of it. So I'm sure that the CBN um, have, um, would have thought about this thoroughly before they came out with this um, circular yesterday, that it would have to only be share capital and share premium, excluding the retained, the retained earnings. I'm sure they would have given it much thought, and they would want to see that that would form definitely part of the total equity or shareholders fund of the bank, but it wouldn't be what the, the capital itself, the main capital base of the bank, because they would want to see the fresh funds come into the banking system in terms of capital raising. So I believe they would have thought about it before they came out with this um, circular. So even if they, are, they have concerns about it, they would definitely have time to you know, meet up with the, uh, meet with the CBN and trash and understand where the regulator is actually coming from in regards to the circular that has been released. Okay, now this particular circular talks about the recapitalization being aimed at bolstering the bank's resilience, solvency, and capacity to support growth in the economy. Is this being threatened right now as we speak? So it is not necessarily being threatened if we look at it from the um, point of view I'm going to share with you right now. So we understand that the banks are in the business of lending, taking from the excess uh, part of society and giving it out to those that need. That is one function that is very vital when we are looking at economic growth generally. And for them to do that, they need to have the adequate funds that they will be able to fall back on in order to grow or supply to um, the aspect of the economy that needs funds to to boost their own productivity. So what that simply means is that when they come out to do this, their capital raising, we will definitely see um, influx of, especially, just look at it from an asset and allocation point of view. We will definitely see the likes of key base that are not so exposed to equities take advantage of this particular um, transaction that is going to happen in the banking space. We will also see FPIs, we've already started to see them, but then those that are keenly interested in the equities market be able to take advantage of this particular transaction. So it is not being threatened. Rather, what we're seeing is what we're going to see is that we're going to have more well capitalized banks. We're going to have um, a banking uh, system that is going to be to be really going to be supervised by the regulators at the end of it. So everything just boils down to the long run and the target of the $1 trillion economy. And I would say that it is not being threatened. Of course, in the short term, there might be some capital raises, rights issue, and uh, mergers and acquisition. All right, now that you've touched on that, in, Nabila, I'd like to ask you this, really. They've been given three options. Uh, talk about injection of fresh equity capital, M&As, and of course, there is that about upgrade or downgrade of license authorization. Now, uh, what must these banks consider before settling for any of these options? So every bank has its own strategy for expansion. That's if you're looking at it from measures and acquisition point of view. Every bank has what it wants. They know what they want. They know how they, their growth trajectory, what they want their, their growth trajectory to be. So they would have to consider that. They would have to cons If they are looking at the first option or the um, capital raising, for instance, let's start from that. They would look inwards and see how much they actually need to increase their share capital, their, their minimum capital requirements to and now look for the best options. Remember that the circular also mentioned that for whatever plan that they decide to take, they would have to submit it to the CBN for, for review uh, on or before April 30th, before they start to uh, implement whatever plan they choose. Now, for the mergers and acquisition, for banks that have, um, that do, for banks that would want to take that route, they would have to look at their brand their um, identity, what is it that they want, which banks out there really is in line with what they would want to see and how they intend to see themselves within the five to, in the next five to ten years. So those are the things they would consider before they now take the route of, okay, let's do a merger and acquisition with a particular bank. Now, the last option, which I, uh, in my personal view, is not really the best, which is to scale down on your license. Um, it would just mean that that bank wants to, that particular bank that will take that route, we want to preserve its identity and brand and just feels like um, if I have the minimum requirements for a regional license, why not? If I have a minimum re uh, the requirement for, for, for a national license, why not? So these are the things that I believe they would consider before they take whatever um, step in that direction okay. uh, with regards to capitalization. 
Thank you so much, Nabila Mohammed, Investment Analyst, Chapel Hill, Denham. Thanks for your thoughts and time. Thanks for having me.